How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're back on OfferUp looking at some tuner cars and we have some pretty weird ones today. At least a couple of them are really weird. The other ones are just some really sweet tuner cars but this first one I'm going to show you is really weird. Anyways, if you guys want to support the channel, pick up some merch, link in the description. I haven't made any new merch. I've been busy with a lot of shit with everything going on. I haven't had time to sit down and, and uh, talk to people and design some new stuff so I haven't done that. But if you want to pick up some of the old merch, if you've got money burning in a hole in your pocket, then go ahead. It seems like the JDM car has finally touched down in the States. So it's just a matter of time before it goes through customs and then it gets registered and then I can go and have it shipped here. So I can't wait. I'm really excited. Mustang is being uh, taken in to be looked at tomorrow and then uh, I'll be getting it back probably next week sometime. So anyway, just a small update on the cars. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right in with this first car, which is probably the weirdest tuner car I've ever seen, if you want to call it that. Pro Charger Supercharger Slingshot SL. So he's technically right. He's not wrong by saying Pro Charger Supercharger. A Pro Charger is a Supercharger, so just a little fun fact for you guys. Anyways, a Slingshot with a Pro Charger. Now, I know I believe their engines are like Cobalt engines or some dumb shit. I think I watched the Doug DeMiro review on it, and he said they were like Cobalt engines, so they're not really the, the peppiest of engines. But, I mean, you toss a Pro Charger on any engine, and it's going to wake it up for sure. And this little thing that weighs nothing, I mean, you got to imagine boosting a Miata or boosting an S2K at that point. It's just a whole lot of fun. So, anyways, like I said, let's go look at the exterior. The exterior looks, uh, well, it looks like a slingshot. Slingshot owners like doing weird shit. Neon underglow, I mean, on a slingshot, it weirdly goes with it. I think he has a wing on it, too. It weirdly goes with it. Even though it's the dumbest looking shit, it weirdly goes with it because the whole car is based on dumb looking shit. The front end of it, I mean, they look cool. They're just, you know, different, I guess. I'd rather just ride a motorcycle, but I'm sure these are a lot of fun to drive, too. It is kind of stupid how you have to wear a helmet with one of these. You can actually get a ticket for that. The cockpit looks uh, very uh, futuristic, kind of, I guess. I don't know. It looks weird. It looks like it's trying to be futuristic. Like, it fits the styling. I guess you wouldn't want to just see basic-ass interior right here, but it looks kind of weird at the same time. I like it, but then I don't. I feel like this would just feel really cheap, but who knows? I've never touched one, so. Underneath the hood, we do see that Pro Charger sticking right out in front of the motor. I don't know if he motor swapped it. I guess we'll see in the description. I doubt it. Uh, that does just look like a normal just Chevy engine to me, but who knows? I, I could be wrong here. It's not like I'm, I'm looking up Cobalt engines for a swap or anything don't get that confused based on the exterior i mean i wouldn't really want to call this a sleeper just because he made it look rice i mean it's a slingshot these things aren't really fast to begin with but i'm sure it's a lot of fun to drive with that pro charger and i'm sure it sounds pretty wicked the only thing i would have probably done differently is maybe honda swap it like a k-series and then boost it i think that'd be a lot more fun but if it all just depends i guess what you're trying to do anyways 2016 and a half i don't know what that means pro charger supercharger series inquiries only fully customized from california has backup camera 20 inch rims on the front and 22 inch rim on the back airbag sound system i mean it's pretty cool i'm not gonna lie and but i don't think it's worth that much though i don't it was seventy five thousand dollars. how much is a new one i thought they were like 20 grand what the fuck the sl is only 25k why is why is this guy charging 75k buddy Come on, your neon underglow and your pro charger didn't add 50k. If that's the case, then I have a $200,000 Mustang outside. Shit, I should sell and go buy a Lamborghini really quick. Wow. Anyways, for $75,000, you can have a uh, boosted Cobalt. Next car, 2005 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo V I I M R. So it's an Evo 8. Pretty cool. Don't see these every day. And this one looks like it's in really good condition. We will look in the description in a second. I don't think he has too many pictures, sadly. But we can take a look at this beautiful photography. It's just vibrant. It's juicy. The car looks wet. I love it. It's making me a little bit moist, if I do say so myself. The exterior looks really nice. It looks pretty stock, but he did do some subtle things to put his own taste on it. Wheel setup looks nice. I like his tires. He doesn't have rubber band tires, which is nice. I don't remember the last time I saw an Evo without a wing on it. And I do like how it looks without a wing. I'm not going to lie. The front end, I've always been kind of a WRX guy, but I mean, Evos are sick. They're cool cars. I wish Mitsubishi still made them. That way they'd be a relevant car company, but sadly they don't. The rear end looks nice. He put a little decal on it, but I mean, if that's the only thing he's got on it, you can't really complain. If he had it all over the car, it'd be a little bit too much. But just one little thing on the rear, I'm sure it probably says Evo in like Japanese or whatever. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a guess at that. Vortex generators, that looks like it for his exterior mods. And of course, some mud flaps. It's not a rally car without mud flaps. We all know that. Little fart can exhaust that probably shoots flames. I mean, is it a JDM tuner if it doesn't shoot 12 foot flames? If you can't cook marshmallows off of your tuner car, is it even a tuner? 
Anyways, I love the photography. This car does look really clean. I wish he showed underneath the hood and the interior a little bit more. I mean, these are just kind of like Instagram photos, it looks like. But it is a very clean looking car on the exterior. So if that followed it into the interior and underneath the hood, then I'm sure it's a pretty solid car. He's charging $23,000 and he has uh, not that long of a description. I thought this one had a huge one. Custom candy red paint job. Nice. Stock block. Brand new FP red turbo. Kel Ford 272 cams with, with GSC Beehive Springs, ETS intercooler and piping, map performance, O2 housing, blah, blah, blah. If you put Beehive Springs, chances are you're running a lot of boost. I had to toss him on my Mustang just to up the boost. So I'm going to bet he's pushing some serious power. I mean, he does say he's on semi-slicks too. So that's cool. I mean, if you need semi-slicks on an all-wheel drive car, I mean, you got to be pushing some sort of power. Anyway, he's asking for 23000 or a trade for a Tacoma TRD Sport or a nice Honda Acura with cash on top. Look, if you got a nice Honda or Acura, go do it. This is probably a steal. <laughs> Anyways, pretty clean tuner car. Very subtle, but I like it. A candy red paint job on an Evo. I mean, who would have thought it looked so good? Candy red looks good on everything, though. Anyways, here we go. Nitrous 2010 Cadillac CTSV 9-second street car. 9-second street car. That's mean. And this guy's only charging 40 k You could buy two of these for the same price as one slingshot. So, cool. CTSV is just a very gangster, just grandma car. A lot of people don't know what it is, but once they get gapped by it, they will never forget. They see the V, they know they're catching the L. Styling of a CTSV is very subtle. It's not very in your face like a Chevy's Corvette or the Camaro. CTSV is meant for the higher class, the wealthy, the people that have good taste, modest taste, not trying to show off, not trying to be in your face, but it is still a very aggressive looking car. The angles, the hood, everything about the front end is pretty mean. I'm not going to sit here and say it looks like a Camaro ZL1 or a brand new GT500, but it's a pretty aggressive looking car. And especially when you hear it, yeah, it's a mean MF. Trying to stay monetized, okay? We're not going to cuss. Fitment, I mean, it's better than most cars at car meets nowadays. It's right up on the lip right there. I like that. Nine second car on nitrous. That's just mean. I've never been a huge nitrous guy. I've always like been like, damn, I wonder, I wonder if it'd be worth it to toss nitrous on my car. I wonder if it'd be worth it. But I don't know. I've just heard too many like horror stories about it. And I'm sure if you have the right tuner and you don't push that much, I'm sure it's okay. But I don't know. I just, I feel like that's like cheating, like the last resort for like horsepower. Anyways, it looks like he has forged star F14 wheels. Those are the ones I wanted, but I went with the ESR forged wheels. Here's his nitrous setup. No officer, it's stock. I'm just cooling down the soda for the party I'm about to go to. This is just a, a little refrigerator unit. I, I'm stock though. Looks like maybe a methanol kit too, maybe? I don't know, we'll have to check in the description or an ice box, I guess, technically. We'll have to see. Underneath the hood, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty much stock. Working on this thing is probably not that fun. My buddy, he has a CTSV and he gaps the shit out of me, like 850 wheel horsepower, gaps the shit out of me. Like I'm not even moving. These things move. I think his is an auto. I'm pretty sure it's an auto. So you just, you just stomp the pedal and you just let it go. Just let it go. Anyways, I like how his interior has stayed pretty much stock. He didn't gut it. He doesn't have racing seats. He's like, look it. I want the luxury part too. While I'm gapping you, I want to be comfy. I don't want to be all, you know, sweaty while I'm gapping you. I can gap you with the AC on. It's not an issue in this car. Looks like it does E85, puts down 770 blower only. Hey, that'd be a good race between me and him if he stays on blower. A thousand plus rear wheel horsepower on nitrous. Okay, maybe I should throw some nitrous on my car. <laughs> maybe I should. Uh, it might not be a bad idea at that point. Wow, thousand plus horsepower on nitrous. Because I'm doing around 770 rear wheel horsepower on my car. And if he's gaining that much on... On spray i mean that's that's not that bad i mean i guess he'll say what stage kit he has if it's a two stage or something but anyway i'm not going to read this whole thing looks like he has 2.5 inch grip tech pulley zl1 lid and reinforced brick ported ls3 heads ported blower kong performance custom grind crankshaft suite oh he got the ngk plugs guys dude that's where he's getting all his power from the ngk plugs big show purge so anyways if you guys want to sit here and read all this, go ahead. I mean, it sounds like a pretty killer car. And for 40K, I mean, you're getting a 1,000 horsepower on a CTSV street car for 40K. That's that's wild. That is pretty sick. Who knows how long it'll last, but I mean, that's pretty sick. Next car. I mean, what is a tuner car's video without the tuner legend himself, the 1,000 stock wheel horsepower Toyota Supra? I mean, you buy these stock, they come with like a 1,000 wheel horsepower. It's already a tuner from factory. What, what, you don't need to do anything. Anyways, this guy thought it'd be funny to waste more money on it and uh, build the motor to make it so it can handle that thousand wheel horsepower. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. He, it looks like, why is no one including too many photos? This is a pretty depressing episode photo-wise. Pretty sick cars, but 
photo wise not the best a black toyota supra mark IV, the legend himself i'm not a huge fan of black on cars i mean especially an older car like this because you the paint really shows just how old it is and this one we're, we're getting a hint of that right here the paint the paint's done okay it needs either a paint correction or it needs to be wrapped or something i mean that is swirl city right there but i mean when it's a race car like this it's not a show car no one really cares and talk about goals for wheel setup. I mean, that's a more muscly wheel setup than I have on my muscle car. Look at that. Big old bead lock with a slick in the rear, little skinny up front. I'm assuming that's a skinny. It might not be. Anyways, this is a pretty solid looking Supra. I mean, I feel like when you do build a drag Supra, they kind of all look like this. Big ass slick in the rear, a lot of meat. It's a good looking car. There's no, there's no doubting that. Why did you do the same picture twice? It's a good looking car. We know how Supras look. The exterior, I mean, Supras are, are they're, they're great. They're great looking. I wouldn't say they look like a modern car, but they're, they're a timeless car. They're going to be remembered until Instagram is gone. Once Instagram is gone, everyone's going to forget about them because there won't be any stupid memes about them. But until then, they will stick around. Not too much to look at. It's a black Supra. It's got slicks. It's a fast car. Let's read his description. Fully built motor, 1,000 horsepower built stage 4, FTI, TH, 400, 49 inch, upgraded axles, drag pack. AEM, oh god, you could use a comma here or there, buddy. AEM Infinity ECU Custom Harness 7685 Gen 2 Turbo will come with cage not installed yet and parachute mount and many more things. I mean, you know your shit's fast if you're mounting fucking parachutes to your car. You know what else has parachutes? Planes. People that jump out of planes. Those crazy ass dragster cars, those things have had parachutes. So this thing you know is fucking fast. Anyways, 50k, I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad deal. Next car, 2003 Acura RSX Big Power. What is a tuner episode without a little bit of a sleeper? And I mean, look at that. Looks like a stock-ass Acura RSX. Nobody would want this. I wouldn't want to touch this with a stick. But when you go and you look underneath the hood, now I'm about to make love to it. Now I'm about to make real good love to it. Anyways, we have a boosted RSX little sleeper build. Looks like his motor has what it needs to get the power through it. And it looks like it's well done. I don't see a bunch of shitty ass uh, lines running everywhere. I don't see zip ties that are uncut. I don't see a mess. It looks like everything is a neatly done. It looks like it was professionally done. So if he didn't, if he did do that himself, props to him. We got an RSX Type S stock exterior. Again, like usually when you go and you dump a lot of money underneath the hood, I mean, you get new wheels, you lower it, you might put a wing on it, a wrap, something. But stock, I mean, that's all. That's what the sleeper build is all about. And <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, my brain had to just like fathom what I'm looking at here. Look how crazy this intercooler setup is. This is the, this has to be one of the coolest intercooler setups I've ever seen. That is sick. I don't know why I like it so much where it's just like you got the fat ass Mishimoto radiator and then you have the fat ass intercooler right in front of it. It looks so sick. Wow. A lot of people ask me why the Pro Charger intercoolers look weird. And I think it's because they try to ramp the air to flow better so that way it's not just a box. And it looks like this one's doing the same shit as you can see down here. It looks like the air would come in, ramp through here, and then come out this side. Instead of it just hitting a 90 degree angle and then bouncing downwards, 90 degree angle, and then bouncing outwards. It kind of flows better. I don't know. It's just an idea. I'm not an engineer. That has to be one of the coolest intercooler setups so ever. Interior looks stock. No racing seats. Uh, wow, finally, someone that's actually provided photos of what they've done to the car. The only thing that makes it look like it's got some power are the A-pillar gauges. That's the only thing. I wonder from the exterior if you can even tell if it has an intercooler. It looks like he's got tinted windows, so you're not going to see him anyways, but this has to be one of the cooler sleeper builds we've seen. I mean, 20k is a lot to ask, actually, when you think about it for an Acura RSX. I would think 10 or 15 for this, but I mean, if, if he built it, built it, then he might be able to get it. <clears throat> anyway, this guy has the longest description of them all. I'm not going to read all of this. I'll read the little important things. Precision 6266 Turbo. Looks like he has Hellcat fuel pumps, so he's got plenty of fuel. I like how he says this. Exterior? <laughs> All stock, baby? This thing looks like your mom's taxi driving down the road. Full sleeper build. I'm assuming he meant to put taxi. I know it says tax. I'm not stupid. Looks like his transmission is proven past 800 horsepower capable, so that's sick. Not going to have problems shifting there. And a fully built motor if you want to read all this, like I said. You can go ahead and pause it. If you're really interested, if you're trying to build your little RSX for this, that's kind of why I do this. Give you guys little ideas of what you guys can do to make your cars faster. And see, your car doesn't have to look that crazy to be fast. It could look stock and you can gap the shit out of anybody. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you want to send me any of these posts, send them to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com. I will keep you guys updated on my Twitter about the new car. I don't really want to do a reveal for it until it comes in. 
just because that seems kind of anticlimactic to reveal what it is and I haven't even seen it yet. So anyways, go ahead, follow my Twitter, follow my Instagram and uh, stay posted on all that. Until next video, peace.